you know what you should do. You should follow me on Twitter at Brummer018. Link in the description. Do it now. Hello everyone, Brahma18 here. Thank you for joining me today. Welcome along to another Real Football feature. So, recently, Paris Saint-Germain striker and Uruguay international Edison Cavani announced that he'll be leaving the Parisian club at the end of the 2019-2020 season. Now, of course, with it, that brought around lots of speculation around the next club which he'll be joining. There's been lots of talk over the previous years about him transferring from PSG to other clubs, but a move has never actually materialised. Now, with him leaving on a free transfer, I want to talk about which club I think he should sign for. Now, I've identified one team that I think should be chomping at the bit to sign Edison Cavani. And I think he should be absolutely buzzing and determined to join. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to go into all the teams that have been linked to him, why I don't think he'd be a good fit for those teams. And then at the end, we'll talk about and identify the one team that I think would be a perfect fit for Edison Cavani. So with Cavani, what have you got? Now, you've got a prolific striker, proven goal scorer amongst the different divisions and of, over the years. Now, one thing that I want to talk about is his underrated work rate and his underrated nature. A lot of people seem to think that he's really second fiddle when it's not quite the case. Uh, you know, with Edison Cavani, you've got one of the top elite strikers in world football. You know, there aren't many strikers in the world that are better than him. And so with that bearing in mind, if you're Cavani, I'm thinking you've got to go to a team that's ready to win now. You know, you can't go to a project and you can't go to a team where you're just going to sort of be treading water with Cavani. You know, he's, he's won lots of stuff, you know, lots of league titles, domestic cups at uh, PSG. You know, and he's ready to take that next step. He wants to win in a different division, wants to win a different league. And he also, you know, wants to to try and compete on the European stage as well, if possible. So he's got to go to a team that's ready to win right now with the, the players, with the coaching staff, the setup all together to go. So you've got to bear that in mind as well. And that's why some of the clubs that we're going to talk about shortly, you know, are not the club for him. He should also bear in mind that you want Cavani, with him being a world-class elite striker, he has to go to a place where he's going to be the top guy, you know. Or if they play with a two, he's going to play within that two. You know, you can't go to teams, and we're going to go on about them shortly, where they've already got a, a, a top-class striker there, or they've got their own project striker there, who they're working on, who will be the main guy. You know, if you're Cavani, you've got to go somewhere where you are going to be the number one guy. So you have to bear that in mind as well, taking into account every decision, um, you know, with the club. So let's talk about the Premier League. You know, obviously, the riches uh, and the, the reputation of the Premier League. There's always talk about him joining a club in January. It was linked to the likes of Tottenham and Manchester United. Over the, the last couple of months or so, it's been linked to Chelsea. So we're going to go through those those three clubs, really. I might throw in Arsenal there as well. And why he shouldn't sign for any of those Premier League clubs. So let's start with Chelsea. You know, you've got... Obviously, Frank Lampard in there, had his first season. Lots of links to Chelsea in recent times. Now, he shouldn't join Chelsea for two reasons. One is Tammy Abraham. And two is it looks as though Timo Werner will soon be joining him. So there, you've already got two young strikers who are quite clearly, you know, the number one guys. You know, they're part of the project and they'll be in the round. So, you know, not only would it be sort of, redundant for Chelsea to sign him in the first place. It would be redundant for him to go as well. You've also got Olivier Giroud waiting in the wings who, you know, himself should be could fair enough feel like that he deserves a first team opportunity. Um and so, you know, when you add Cavani to that mix, that's that's not a good mix. So, you know, with Chelsea, particularly with Werner now, you know, most likely joining the club, um, I think that would be a very, very bad move for all parties involved, not just uh, Edison Cavani. So, Chelsea is definitely a write-off. So, next up, we have Manchester United. And it was in the January transfer window this year uh, that Manchester United, the links really came to fruition. Uh, obviously, Rashford had been injured for a few months. Martial was their only fit striker at the club, unless you want to count Greenwood. But of course, he's generally played on a wing more, at least this season. And so, there was a lot of talk about them getting in a striker. And Edison Cavani came up a lot, particularly with him leaving 
at the end of the season, or being out of contract at the end of the season. So here's why you shouldn't join Manchester United either. Once you get Marcus Rashford back, you've got two slash three strikers there who are all young, who are clearly the project players. You've got Rashford, you've got Martial, and you've got Mason Greenwood as well. It's quite clear that one of them plays up front and one of them is the project. So with Cavani, once again, despite the fact that he is a world-class player, you are still playing second fiddle. You know, you are playing second fiddle to a Marcus Rashford, who, of course, you know, has, has banged goals this season. You know, he has bagged this season. And so, again, with, with that being in mind, if you're, if you're Edinson Cavani, yes, Man United might sign him for added depth, but if you're Edinson Cavani, you don't go. You don't do that. You know, don't make that the mistake of, you know, when you're still in your, your prime, and he is still in his prime, you know, he's not dropping off, not athletically, you know, and certainly not in terms of experience. So, you know, when you're not dropping off, don't go to a team where you might only be a rotational piece, you know. So, again, similar to Chelsea, they've got their projects, they've got their main men. Don't join. Don't don't go there. So, finally, we'll talk about Tottenham in the Premier League and why you shouldn't join them either. You know, this one's fairly self-explanatory. Harry Kane, you know, again, you are playing second fiddle. Regardless of who goes there as a striker, they are playing second fiddle to Harry Kane. Um, and as you'll have seen my Twitter video at the start of, the, uh, of, of every video, you know I like Harry Kane. So, you know, there's not really a competition there. So, again, for him, for Tottenham, on the other hand, you know, They'd, they'd love that. That would be a great signing for them to have Cavani as their second striker because they have no other strikers other than Harry Kane. But, you know, again, for Cavani, that's a bad decision. You won't be getting many starts um, and it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So that's really the, the three Premier League teams that I think have been linked to him. Uh, Arsenal as well, maybe a couple of links. Again, you know, you've got Lacazette and Aubameyang. It's really not, it's really not ideal for him. So, you know, same again. With all those teams, you're playing second fiddle, you're not going to be the main guy. So what about the Serie A? You know, there's been a couple of links, in particular with a return to Napoli. And, you know, whilst that is a, a great story to tell and a great one for the writers, you know, here's why you shouldn't join Napoli. Again, you've got three forwards there. Potentially four. You know, you've got Dries Mertens and you've got Lorenzo Insigne, who, who make up the, the front three. And you've also got Kalian there, of course, trying to extend his deal. Now... You've also got Arcadius Milik waiting in the wings. Do you go if you're Napoli and sign Cavani? And what, do you stick him out on the right instead of Callion? Do you put him up instead of Mertens, who, of course, has, has recently just broken the top goal scorer record for Napoli? You know, what do you do there? You know, that, that, that there's a lot of rotational pieces there and not enough, in a way, of a guarantee of Cavani to, to be the main guy. You know, and again, if you're Napoli... I don't think you, you make that risk. Don't forget, you've got Mertens, who's 32. You've got Callion, who's 33. And you've got Insigne, who has just turned 29. You know, these guys are getting older. Um, and you need some youth in there. So Cavani isn't the answer there. You know, if you add him, Cavani's 33. He's actually older than all of them. Um, you know, you're just adding uh, another one of the same problem, if you get what I mean. So, you know, again, that's not the right move. I get it. You know, there is a a great story there and a bit of a heart heart you know, a bit of a homecoming and heartfelt welcome, but it's not the right move, unfortunately. The new Italian team I want to talk about is AC Milan. So of course they're always linked with everyone as well. Not quite as much as linked with Cavani, but something I want to talk about anyway. Now, this is the whole ready to win now sort of thing. You know, AC Milan, they are not ready to win now. They've just signed Ibrahimovic who again I say what you want about that move, a very baffling in itself. But, you know, with Cavani, as I spoke about earlier, he needs to go to a team that's ready to win right now, you know, and they can bring him into the fold and he can really provide that missing piece of the puzzle. And with AC Milan, you just don't have that. There's a lot of uncertainty, you know, for, again, you don't know if you're going to play a but over Ibrahimovic, which is another issue. Um, and, again, it's just not the right sort of move because I, I understand a return to Italy would you know, be on the cards of Cavani, would be open to it because, of course, uh, of his time at Napoli. And it wouldn't just have to be Napoli. It could be a, an AC Milan. It could be an Inter Milan. But again, you know, same sort of problems. You sort of, you don't know if you're going to be part of a rotational piece or if you're going to be the guy. And if you're in AC Milan's case, you're not ready to win now. 
And so that's a big, big issue for someone who's 33. He needs to go to a team who, you know, have the pieces in place. So we sort of rounded off the teams that he's been linked to um, and why I don't think he should join them now. I want to talk about the club I have chosen that I think Cavani should join, that I think should be chomping at the bit to sign Cavani. And that is Atletico Madrid. So with Atletico Madrid, of course, you've got a new country and a new culture for Cavani to experience. And that's the first thing. You know, obviously he's been to been to Italy and been to France. You know, the, the appeal of moving to a new country and a new city. I think that's one that a lot of footballers, particularly ones who have already shown that they can relocate countries, um, are appealed to. So that's the first thing. Second of all is that you've got a team that's ready to win now. You know, Atletico Madrid, they're set up to win now. They've got players in their prime um, and they're ready to go. And this sort of ties in with one of the reasons why he's such a good fit for them. Because, you know, obviously they've dropped off a little bit this season in the league. Now, of course, in the Champions League, they're still in that. They do. They beat holders Liverpool. And, you know, so they look good. But in the league, they, they have sort of dropped off. And the reason for this is, obviously, you know, they lose Antoine Griezmann in the summer, which is a, a really big void to fill. So they go out and they, they sign Yao Felix, who's, you know, they kind of see as a like-for-like -like replacement. Obviously an inflated price due to the, the market and the demand. Um, but they sign Yao Felix as a replacement. Now, you know, he, he's had an off-season. He's had a down-season sort of thing. Um, and, you know, that, that, that has cost them. But if you bring Cavani into that fold, you've got Diego Costa up with him as well. You've really got a team that is in its prime and it's ready to go right now. Um, and you know that sort of thing with Cavani going to Atletico Madrid, it would, it would sort of, it would be a match made in heaven because you've got both sides would essentially need the other one. You know, you've so with with Cavani, you've got a an energetic striker, high work rate, a, a massively underrated work rate. He's untrue, particularly you know when he was at PSG and Ibrahimovic was there, he would actually get sort of forced out onto the right hand side. Um, and he could do that because he can track back. You know, he's got the movement to move in behind down the line when he needs to. He's got the mobility uh, and he's got the energy levels, despite the fact that he's 33. Um, you know, the guy is, is clearly a workhorse. And that is part of the Diego Simeone mold for a start. That's something that's really, I think, going to appeal to, to Simeone is that he can actually track back. When Costa can stay forward as, as more of a target man, as an out ball, you know, you've got Cavani who can track back and become part of that sort of 10 man unit, defensive unit. So that's very, very important. Also, as I say, you've got the mobility. So when you've got Costa playing as a target man going forward, you know, Cavani sort of mo being mobile around him, moving around him, be creating the movement, creating space, moving into space. And so uh, with that in mind, you know, you've obviously got that sort of big man, little man kind of target you know, sort of combination. Obviously, it's not quite a big man, little man, but it's the same sort of thing. You've got one who's more of a target, one who's more mobile. So with a, a, the, the strike force of Costa and Cavani up front, that is a real match made in heaven. That's a force for anyone to have to deal with. And moving on to sort of that, you know, he would be a first team guy. You know, obviously you've got Yao Felix there and he's going to keep getting rotated. But when you've got two strikers up front rather than one, it does create that more mobility and more sort of room for manoeuvre in terms of rotating and also you know he's he's going to be a first team guy you know with two up front he will be a first team player so you've got all of that in abundance um, and that's why it's, it's an absolutely perfect move for both parties involved in fact, uh, sort of going back to that point early, you know, with Simeone, Cavani is a Simeone player. You know, he's a Simeone type of player. If ever I've saw one, if ever you look at one and you go, you look for the the, the attributes that a player has. Cavani has those attributes. He's happy to play, very versatile. Happy to play both on the front foot or on the back foot. High work rate, high stamina levels, happy to sacrifice himself for the team, but also can be that figurehead, just like Griezmann was going forward. He's got the quality. He is a 20-goal-a-season man, um, which is what they're lacking at the moment up front with, with what Yao Felix has been unable to produce this season. And so you've actually got a great fig figurehead for that team. And it's sort of puzzling to me that this isn't being spoken about a little bit more. 
you know, why are teams not linking Cavani and Atletico Madrid together more? Because I think this is a perfect match made in heaven. Um, and for me, this move has to go. Atletico Madrid have to chase this move. They can get him on a free as well. Yes, there will be high wages. There's no denying that. But, you know, you're going to have to pay it anyway. For an elite striker, you will have to pay that. So to get one on a free, you know, they'd, they'd be laughing. They really, really would be laughing. And I think... Like I say, they're ready to win now. They are a top quality side who have proven that they can win major trophies, whether that be the league, Europa League, um, you know, in the Copa del Rey, etc. And and like I say, they've been so close to winning that Champions League. This could really push them over the edge because when you look at it, what they've been missing is someone like Cavani up front. And, you know, this could be the missing piece of the puzzle. So for me, match made in heaven. Great, great sign this would be for Atletico Madrid and, and a fantastic move for him as well. It really, really would. He'd suit the system so well. He'd just slot in, um, you know, and he wouldn't need much time to adapt in terms of the system. Maybe the culture and the language, etc. Obviously, that's a different story. But um, in terms of the system, you know, I think he'd fit right in. So that's really it for me, guys. Get at me in the comment section. Let me know which teams you think you know, should try to sign Edison Cavani. Do you agree with me that Atletico Madrid is the right sort of breeding ground, the right move for him to make? Or should he be looking at another side? Should he maybe look to go home? Maybe another country? You know, get at me in the comment section down below um, and I will uh, try my best to get back to all of you. If you've enjoyed this video, please do leave a like and subscribe to the channel as well for more in regular football and gaming content. Don't forget to ring the bell as well to um, get notifications every time I upload. Is a bell, bell's, bell's here, isn't it, for you? So ring the bell right here to uh, get notifications every time I upload. Don't forget to check out my other football and FIFA videos as well. Um, did one on Vincent Company and why him leaving Man City cost him the title. So please do go and check that one out as well. And I know we are going to finish it off there. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Can I